Mark Shannon for The Voice newspaper. Today I'm with Keith Preddy, who uh, is known to be the first professional Michael Jackson impersonator this country has had. And also in 2010, on the GMTV, he was awarded Dad of the Year. Now, uh, December of last year, on the 18th, before Christmas, uh, an event happened, a domestic event, incident I should say, and Keith has since admitted one account of uh, assault by beating in uh, Croydon Court. Um, the event is quite a complicated case. Uh, the court heard that Keith threw certain objects at his wife Emma and he is now admitted to that. We want to hear what Keith has to say about uh, the incident and the events leading up to the incident because uh, Keith sent us his statement publicly apologising about what happened and he has also said the press has uh, reported the full truth. So today we want to hear his event, his uh, version of events and uh, get to the bottom of what really happened. So um, Keith, thank you for joining me today, appreciate it. Tell me first of all, what happened on the 18th of December? Um, well it's quite complicated because I can tell you what happened as actually happened on the 18th of December, but there's so much background, it's not a clear-cut case. But if you want to know specifically what happened that, that day... Just the facts about the actions of what happened. The facts, the actions about what happened yeah. on the 18th of December. Uh, I spent the whole afternoon with my children, as I do every day. Um, we, had, we made a, a video for Christmas, as we do every year. Anyway, moving forward, um, the children went to bed after nine. Uh, my wife then uh, started wrapping up Christmas presents on the floor and that's when I engaged in a conversation with my wife explaining that on that particular day um, I was running around um, with work and everything, I had to get the turkey, I had to get the things she'd asked me to get and my mother who, who um, was going away to America the next day so I, well Thursday, so Wednesday will be the last time I see her for a whole month. I wouldn't see her over Christmas. So I felt bad that I hadn't got to anything because my mum. Yeah. Um, and also the, on the Wednesday, which would have been the 19th of December, was the first anniversary of my auntie who died. So, so obviously to my mind, I've got that on my mind and the fact that I haven't got my mum anything, rushing around to a couple of shops. And I explained this to my wife, and her attitude was, well, I got her presents last week. So I was like, well, all weekend, my wife, my wife questions me about my whereabouts, and I have to find my reaction, if I'm working, where I'm working, what I'm doing. Uh, like I said, it's a long story, and I, I felt like, hang on a minute, I'm the one who has to divulge all my information to you, but you don't tell me anything about what you've done. And if you told me that you'd got the presents last week, one, we wouldn't be having this conversation, and two, I would have been running around in half an hour trying to find something for my mum, because I hadn't got her anything. So after nine o'clock, yeah. things came to a head, yeah. you, you lost your, your temper. No, I didn't lose my temper. You didn't, didn't lose your temper? No. no. So no. what was... Uh, I'll explain to you. Basically, okay. it's called communication. There was a lack of communication. So I was calling my wife a hypocrite, because I have to divulge everything, but she doesn't have to divulge anything to me. So it did get a bit heated, so it wasn't like I lost my temper. I was getting a bit upset about that situation. Would you say you were in control of your actions? At that point I was, yes. But then oh, any, any further uh, comments you'd like to say about this whole case and uh, the events around it? Just yeah, find the, the voice readers the, for the, the public to know. I'd like to say domestic violence uh, shouldn't be tolerated for men and for women, but what people don't understand is there are women who are abused by their partners, which can be women or men, for years or months, and the one time that they may retaliate doesn't mean they're the abuser. The flip side of the coin, men are abused by partners, male and female, and the one time that they retaliate doesn't mean that they are the abuser, even though that they've done something. It's, that is just a fact of life, but what happens with men, we don't get no support. Where's the men's refugees? You go on the website, it's all about women. What I'm saying is, there are no places for men to go. It's not a, a, a dumb thing for men to talk about. Men aren't taken seriously. And all I'm trying to say is, which is now what my campaign will be now, is, which my website is suffering silence, it's not suffering silence, whether you're a male or a female. I'm a perfect, I'm a classic case of what's happened to me. For the fact that my wife has got a bruise, I've lost my home, I've not seen my daughter for four months, 
I've now lost my whole career. I'm not a plumber or a carpenter. I work with children, vulnerable people. I've had an exemplary record. I've never injured or harmed or been arrested before. In 10 years of my work, nothing. And to work with children, you need to be patient. You need to be calm, which is what I do at work. And my whole career is now gone. You know what? What have I got left? I've got my dignity left. That's why I'm here today. Because I'm not getting out of what happened. I hold my hand up. My wife got injured. And I'm partly responsible. Partly responsible. But when you're... When well, you're, you're wholly responsible for your wife sustaining that. She didn't, she didn't, she didn't hit herself. It's, no, she, and, no, no. I say partly responsible. Because, yes, yeah, she didn't hit herself. But... It takes two to have an argument.